All right. Welcome back to episode 18, Rorick Knows. And we're going to talk today about the masseter. You know, what is the masseter? It's the strongest muscle in the human body. Okay. It's this muscle right here. It really is one of the things that allows us to chew and to, to really to masticate, to actually uh, grind our food. And it's a very almost unique thing of homo sapiens. So being the strongest muscle in the body, it also is one that actually can potentially cause you problems. And, and really the things that we've noticed in the past several years is that not only is it a very powerful muscle, but it can have some adverse potential problems. Uh, not only can it make your face look whiter, but also it can be the cause of tension headaches, even the source for migraines. So with the advent of, um, uh, neuromodulators like Botox, there's been some non-surgical ways to, to treat these problems, you know, tooth grinding, tension headaches, and, you know, the increased volume that you see along the mandibular border, the posterior part of that is the masseter. And, and, and all you have to do is just grind, just bite down in your own teeth and you can feel this part of the uh, of your cheek in the back it's not your cheek it's your muscle you just bite down and it, it's called a masseter so we're going to dissect it today uh, and look at exactly what it is and how you can actually use the power of non-surgical techniques especially botox or neuromodulators to get it better so so we're going to actually show you kind of the anatomy of the of the muscle and I'm going to have my fellows, Michael and Jeffrey, talk about, you know, what the muscle is and where, where, where it's located. And, uh, and Michael, why don't you start with that? Because, you know, the masseter is a very strong muscle. It's got a deep and a superficial head, yeah. right? So Yeah, the masseter is a very interesting muscle. I didn't realize this until I started working with Dr. Rourke, but <laughs> the uh, masseter is a little different than how they teach us in, in most anatomy texts. It actually has two divisions. Um, both divisions start at the zygomatic arch and insert into the ramus of the mandible, um, and the mandibular angle. Right. And that, and, the, and this is the arch right here. And then here's the mandibular border. So. And we can see that in a diagram right. in our diagram exactly. as well. Um, there is a superficial division and a deep division. The superficial division in general is thinner than the deep division. And the two tended, the two, uh, divisions, I'm sorry, are, separated by a very stout and very thick tendon, which is important for our injection technique, which we'll, we'll talk about. Here. Right. And then, um, so if you go, if you go look at the next slide, you can actually see that, the you know, this is a very important thing to, uh, to understand. And, and, you know, not only is it, uh, functionally important of obviously for allowing us to eat, um, and to grunt and, and to, uh, and really to, uh, uh, it's the first stage of, of digestion because you, what happens is that, you know, it, it really is the most powerful, like I said, the most powerful muscle, but it, it has some adverse effects as well. And so, um, so how do, how do we, uh, how do we look at that and how do we treat it? So, so Jeff, tell us about, you know, how Botox is used to make, uh, to make it smaller, but also to uh, help, the pain go away with tooth grinding. Yeah, absolutely. So in patients who have problems related to overly strong or overly active masseter muscles, uh, they'll present with a posterior buccal fullness further back in the cheek along the jawline fullness yep. above the mandibular border, um, or problems, as Dr. Rorick said, like tension, headaches, bruxism, tooth grinding at night, even TMJ, temporal mandibular joint symptoms like pain and clicking. Um, and for those patients, neuromodulator is kind of the first line treatment of choice. Um, we, we do a three point injection using a neuromodulator of choice, typically Botox for us. Um, these are, these are deep injections. Um, and I think in a little bit, we'll be getting into exactly how we place those injections right. into the muscle. Um, and, uh, and these injections both decrease the bulk of the muscle, um, even over long periods of time. And they weaken the muscle, not so much that it impairs your ability to actually use it. As Dr. Rourke said, it's a nominally strong muscle, probably stronger than it needs to be. Um, but uh, it decreases the, the pull of the muscle um, that causes those adverse symptoms. Yeah. So what we're going we're gonna to show in the, in, as we go to the next, uh, we're going we're to actually show exactly 
you know, this technique. And really, uh, this is done in the office and you use um, Botox or neuromodulator. And what it does is if you're using a longer needle, you inject it into the front and into the back. And, and when you have the patient kind of bite down and you can then inject the muscle, uh, the superficial and deep compartment, as well as the, the upper part, which is a combination of the deep and superficial tendon. And you can even inject into the capsule as well uh, in patients that have TMJ symptoms. And then also even into the temporalis, which is another accessory muscle uh, that uh, we use in, in mastication. So it's a very powerful muscle. And people always say, well, is that going to make it so I can't chew my food? Absolutely not. This is so strong. I've never seen uh, a patient, even in when I've injected 50 units per side, usually it's 25 units per side, that it's weakened it. But what it does do, it gives you a nice improved shape and contour. And I think that's really a nice addition. So not only does it help with headaches and bruxism, which is a fancy word for tooth grinding, it actually helps with shaping the, 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 the posterior part of the face. And I, you know, I see that not infrequently in patients that come in and they say, I want my buccal fat removed. Well, <laughs> they don't have any buccal fat, which is in the front, but they have these huge wide um, parts of their back of their masseter uh, of their jawline. And that's the masseter muscle. And in, in here you can see uh, the uh, um, a patient that actually has had that. And, you know, you can actually see a long-term result with that. And it's amazing how you can see um, uh, on this next patient. So you can see a patient that actually is over six months after shaping of the masseter. You can see how the, it is now more angulated on her posterior part of her jawline. And this is very, very important, not only aesthetically, but also functionally. These patients come in, I see them coming more frequently, almost like with their frown lines. They're there at three, six months. And sometimes it lasts from three to six months and sometimes even longer. And uh, once you kind of get them into homeostasis, really they come at four to six months and you can do the, the the cosmetic part of the Botox, which is the fillers, which is the the crow's feet and the and the elevens, and, and you can do just a, a mild amount of Botox. And the other thing is, it can be asymmetrical. So they'll come in and they'll have an asymmetric hypertrophy, and the symptoms usually correlate to that well. So the key is start low, twenty five units per side, and then I always see them at six eight weeks, and if they are still symptom free. I don't do anything for probably three to six months and then I'll treat them again. And it just depends on the patient and they will, uh, these patients, not only are they symptom free, they'll be migraine or tension headache free. So it's pretty amazing. So, um, do you see that the volumetric, uh, change in the muscle after you've injected them three or four times, do you see that the volumetric, um, uh, change in the muscle stays about stable. It doesn't yeah. seem to come back to bigger. Their, their bruxism symptoms might come back, but the volume of the muscle seems to stay low. You know, it's a good question, Michael. I think that um, the vol if you keep injecting it sometimes once or twice a year, it will, um, it correlates with their symptoms. Uh, if you stop injecting it, like I had recently had a patient I didn't see back for over a year uh, and she was back and she was back because she'd moved out of the country and she came back because not only was her muscle bigger, but she was very much more symptomatic. She had really bad TMJ and bruxism and uh, she tried all the splints and yeah. was even contemplating surgery, which I probably would not recommend. Yeah. Uh, and treat this first. It's, it's minimally to non-invasive, but so, um, the key is these patients want some symptomatic relief and, and it's non-surgical. I mean, before Botox or neuromodulators, uh, people would actually even interorally resect part of the masseter muscle, yeah. which is an aggressive procedure, aggressive. Uh, which I wouldn't recommend doing uh, or even taking part of the of the mandibular border off. But I think it's I think it's not a good good procedure. So I think that this is an amazing advance in uh, in patients both for symptoms. And, and for shaping. And, uh, and I see this in a lot in patients, uh, especially in some Asian patients that really want some shaping of their posterior part of their, of their masseter, uh, that it works 
great. And I think that there are so many other uses for Botox, uh, for shaping. I mean, we, we see it in the calves and that'll be a subject of another uh, Rorick Nose podcast because, you know, it is another thing that you can do very simply with uh, similar technique injecting into the, into the calf muscles. But, but I think the, uh, the most important thing is, you know, patient selection and knowing the technique, knowing the anatomy. And when you inject this, you have to inject it when the, when the patient bites down. And, and as uh, Michael and, and Jeff both mentioned, that you have to inject the posterior part of the tendon, the deep tendon, and you have to inject it deep uh, when they're, when they're uh, biting down because then it activates and widens the, the deep part of the tendon, which is the most important part of the masseter. And again, so I think the, uh, the things that I, I think we should uh, – leave you with is it's safe, it's reproducible, it works very well for patients with uh, with bruxism, tooth grinding, uh, TMJ problems, uh, and for facial shaping. So, so final yeah. thoughts? And yeah, comments? so I think a really important thing just to reiterate in closing is that <clears throat> for those of you out there that are injecting this, if you're not using a needle that's long enough, you're just going to be injecting the superficial tendon, which can lead to a comp compensatory hypertrophy of the deep tendon right. and worsen the deformity. So really important. That's why we keep stressing that you need to use long needles. You need to use Dr. Rourke's three point technique. So you're hitting both the superficial and more importantly, the deep division of the muscle. Right. And I saw a patient like that not too long ago where she came in and it looked almost like a, a squirrel a because yeah. a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is what part of the country you're from, but yeah. I mean, it's, but, um, and so you just have to inject a deep, yeah. tendon and it's not uncommon to see that so jeff what do you think yeah and also when you're counseling patients about these sort of injections and about reducing masseter uh, hypertrophy um it, you know if they're really interested in contouring their jawline effectively you need to discuss it comprehensively and point out there are other areas where the jawline can be refined so anterior buccal fullness the buccal fat pad sometimes needs to be reduced augmentation of the mandibular border or the chin right. and then reducing volume south of the border you know submental liposuction, radio frequency treatments, things like that. Right. That's exactly right. That's the mandibular border re regimen, you know, masseter, posterior, buccal, anterior, jawline enhancement. And then, of course, if you need to do anything like liposuction or radio frequency skin tightening. So, all right. Well, I think this has been a very educational uh, podcast for improving your knowledge, not only of your body, but also it'll help you know before you go when you have any types, any type of problem that relates to your masseter, bruxism, or tooth grinding. So join us next time for Rorick Nose.